All right, so we had displacement and velocity. Now we're going to look at acceleration. And the acceleration describes how the velocity changes with time. We're looking at a progression here, right? You have your position, and then your displacement is a change in that position. Your velocity is, the, is how the position changes with time, or how the displacement changes with time. Uh, that is, if you go for a longer amount of time, how does your displacement change? And similarly, your acceleration is how your velocity changes with time. So velocity is how displacement changes with time. Acceleration is how velocity changes with time. As such, the, the definitions are pretty much the same. The average acceleration is going to be Vf minus Vi over Tf minus Ti, or I can say delta V over delta t. So for example, if the initial velocity at t equals 0 is 10 meters per second, and the final velocity at t equals 2 seconds is 20 meters per second, then the average acceleration is this. It's going to be uh, 20 meters per second minus 10 meters per second divided by 2 minus 0 seconds. And that gives me uh, 10 over 2, or 5 meters per second excuse me, 5 meters per second squared. The units of acceleration are meters per second per second. Right, it's a rate of change of velocity, and so the units are meters per second squared. Now, if velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, then the speed increases. Remember, these are vector quantities, so they all have directions associated with them. So, for example, if I'm traveling in this direction with a certain velocity, and my acceleration is also in this direction, then as I move further along in time, then my velocity is going to increase. However, if I'm moving in this direction, my velocity and my acceleration is in the opposite direction, then as I move further along, my velocity is actually going to decrease. Okay. Which brings us to the next one. If velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions, the speed will decrease. Notice that I haven't said anything about signs here. Because if I have a negative acceleration, that doesn't mean necessarily that my object is slowing down. And a great example of that we'll see well, in the next couple of examples, where if I drop something, it's accelerating downward, but it's speeding up. And that's because the acceleration is in the negative direction, and the velocity is in the negative direction. However, if I throw something up into the air, as it moves up, it slows down. That's because the velocity is pointing up and the acceleration is downward and so that acceleration is actually causing the object to slow down or just we describe it in that way as slowing down. Alright, so acceleration can be positive even when the object is decelerating or slowing down. And it can be negative even when the object is speeding up. Okay. Don't get confused by the signs. They simply denote a direction. Are they in the negative x or the positive x direction? Not necessarily that the object is speeding up or slowing down. In order to know that, you have to know what is the sign of the velocity. Let's look at this example. I have these uh, final and initial velocities over these times. What is the car's average acceleration? Well, average acceleration is just delta V over delta T. That's going to be negative 20 minus a negative 10 divided by 2 minus 0. Uh, that's
negative 5 meters per second squared. All right, notice that the final velocity is bigger than the initial velocity. That means that initially it was traveling at negative 10 meters per second in the negative direction. But then after two seconds, it's traveling now at negative 20 meters per second. So it has a negative acceleration, but it's actually speeding up. All right, so the car has a negative acceleration, but it's actually speeding up. We get confused because we would call this accelerating, which we would assume it means a positive acceleration, but that's not necessarily the case. All right. Um, so if I wanted to draw the velocity versus time graph for that scenario, let's see, I was starting at negative 20. So let's call this negative 10 and this negative 20. So I'm starting right here and I'll call this one second, two seconds. And then I wind up here. So what I have here is a straight line going between those two points. Um, and so that would be my velocity versus. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I did that incorrectly uh, because I was actually starting at negative 10. So it would actually start here and go there. Let me erase that. All right, so I'm starting at negative 10. I'm starting right here, and then my final velocity is at negative 20. And so my velocity versus time graph looks like this. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and introduce this. This is going to come up a little bit later. But uh, the slope of a velocity versus time graph, I'm going to call that a V versus T, it is the acceleration. And so notice here that this line has a negative slope. In fact, it has a negative a slope of negative 5. All right, let's look at the instantaneous acceleration. We're going to use this quite a bit in the next section. This is the acceleration at a particular instant. And just like we did before, it's defined as the limit as delta t approaches 0 for the average acceleration. That's delta v over delta t. And of course, those of you in calculus know that as a derivative, dv dt. So the acceleration is just the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Graphically, we'll say that it is the slope of the tangent line. On a graph of uh, velocity versus time. So I've already said that, but it was very important to remember. The slope of a V versus T graph, the velocity versus time graph, gives us the acceleration. So for example here, if I were to look at the tangent line here, it would look like this. So that's my tangent line. That's a negative acceleration. But over here, I have... All right, let's see. So uh, the, the slope here of this line gives you the, the acceleration at that particular point. And notice it has a positive slope. That means it has a positive acceleration. Over here, I have a negative slope. That means I have a negative acceleration. Now, if the acceleration is constant, then just as we had with uh, instantaneous and average velocity, the instantaneous acceleration, I'll abbreviate it, will equal the average acceleration if it's constant. That would mean it would look like this. If the acceleration was constant, your V versus T graph would be a straight line. And then uh, the instantaneous is going to always be the same, and it's always going to be the same as the average.
oh, here we go. Yeah, so like for example here. So this is a case where the average acceleration will equal the instantaneous acceleration. All right, let's look at a couple of these. So describe the motion in these plots. Okay, well, you'll see some questions like this on the test, and you'll see some in the online quizzes. Uh, for example, here, I want to know, is this uh, increasing velocity or decreasing velocity, or is it constant velocity? Well, on the first one, I have constant velocity because the velocity is always the same. How about on this second one? Is it increasing, decreasing, or constant velocity? Well, here I have a, a small slope, and then I have a big slope. So I have an increasing velocity, and here I have a constant velocity because it's a straight line. And then I can also ask myself the question, well, is it positive or negative velocity? Well, this is a positive slope, so it's a positive velocity. Likewise, here I have a positive velocity, positive velocity, so it's a, because it has a positive slope. And here my velocity is equal to zero because the slope is equal to zero. Remember, the slope of a position versus time is equal to the velocity. Now, down here, I have a... Uh, oh, and then I can also say something about the acceleration. For this one, because the velocity isn't changing, the acceleration is equal to zero. Here, my velocity is small and positive, and it goes to big and positive. That means my acceleration is positive. Right. If the velocity is increasing, the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction. Here the velocity is not changing, so the acceleration is equal to zero. Let's see here. I have a, It's like I have a positive velocity. I also have a positive velocity here, but it's smaller. So what is the sign of the acceleration? Here the velocity is decreasing in magnitude, but it's in the positive direction. That means that my acceleration must be a negative number. My acceleration is negative. Here I have a two-part system. I have a negative velocity on this part because it has a negative slope. And then over here, I have a positive velocity because it has a positive slope. And in both cases, I have acceleration equal to zero except at this point, and we won't deal with that point, but there's a discontinuity there where the acceleration uh, is not zero. But on either of those branches, in the blue or the red, the acceleration is equal to zero. All right, we'll come back to this. I'll pick up with this later.